If you've seen us play games, you'll know we're dying all the time. Some games, though, won't let our characters actually die-die ever because they've been made immortal through the power of hyper-advanced technology and or science magic. However many pieces our characters get exploded into, they get put back together again in the following games. Watch out for spoilers ahead for these titles. I don't know much about the Traveler, but I know it made me to bring you back. In Destiny, your ghost is a hovering mini robot created by that mysterious Skyball, and ever since Peter Dinklage got patched out, imbued with the AI personality of Nolan North. Cade, when's the last time you rode this elevator? Relax, it works fine. But stand by for a resurrection ghost. He might look like one of those paper fortune telling thingies that you made at school, but the sassy nugget of technology has power over life and death itself. Work. You're alive! You don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost, and you? Well, you've been dead a long time. See, the job of a ghost is to try and scan stuff while you shoot things. The Fallen are trying to access these machines, but something is fighting back? This will take some time. Yeah, thank you. But a ghost's other job is to resurrect you and keep resurrecting you forever, every time you get shot to bits by the forces of darkness. Not to mention every time you fall off the tower and die while you're trying to dance on a sticky out bit. In the world of Borderlands 2, science has conquered death at last, and no one need ever die again. At least not if their DNA is on file with the network of new U stations installed around Pandora, and they've got the cash to pay to have a new body digitally fabricated in one of them when they get obliterated in the line of vault hunting duty. This makes perfect sense, and we have no further questions about how all this works. Except for how Handsome Jack wants you dead, but Handsome Jack owns Hyperion, and Hyperion owns new U stations, and why can't he just delete your DNA record to stop you respawning? So if you could just do me a favor and off yourself, that'd be great. Thanks, Pumpkin. This is why he's called Handsome Jack and not Intelligent Jack. What the... F what just happened? When Bioshock Infinite hero Booker DeWitt gets murderized by the denizens of Columbia, and we mean properly murderized, not knocked out and dragged away and patched up by good old Liz, he resurrects by waking up in what appears to be his old office, from where he jogs it back onto the pitch. By the end of the game, we understand this to mean that this one Booker you're playing actually does die, but reviving in the office from Booker's old life back on Terra Firma signifies how the Lutes twins have gone and conscripted another Booker from another parallel universe to start all over again with. And they've done this loads of times before the game even began. So I guess the Lutesses have a secret pile of Booker corpses somewhere? One for every time you got him killed. Let's hope this is the Booker that manages a perfect run through. Oh. <laughs> Rosalind, throw this one on the corpse pile, we're going to need another booker. When you go outside the testing courses, the only way I can retrieve you is to violently disassemble you, then carefully reassemble you. Luckily, you don't feel pain. At any rate, you don't have a way to communicate that you feel pain. I consider that a failing, by the way. What better use for a giant advanced AI than smashing little robots and rebuilding them over and over and over? All available courses. That's how GLaDOS makes good use of her time and vast intelligence in Portal 2's co-op mode, in which she tests robot pals Peabody and Atlas by crushing and dissolving them and then reconstructing them so she can watch them be crushed and dissolved some more. She could do that because they're robots and Aperture has infinite robot parts, probably. It seems like maybe she's a bit sadistic and a bit bored. GLaDOS, you ever heard of Netflix?
In Metal Gear Solid 3, it is impossible for heroic main character Naked Snake to die. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I've died lots of times in Metal Gear Solid 3. Getting shot by guards, accidentally forgetting to take a revival pill after taking a fake death pill, gracefully dolphin diving off a cliff mere minutes into the virtuous mission. Maybe that's just me. But while Snake appears to die in all these scenarios, if you leave the game over screen for a minute or so, you'll see the words change until they say Time Paradox. That's the game subtly spoiling itself, because at the end, it's revealed that Naked Snake is Big Boss, the genetic father of Solid Snake. And some other lesser snakes. If Naked Snake were to die in 1964, then the previous games in the series, including the very first Metal Gear game, couldn't exist, even though they already exist. Still with me? No one can actually decide what would happen in the case of an actual time paradox, but the general consensus is that it would either be impossible or just super bad. So you're just going to have to put a pin in that dream of going back in time and murdering your own grandfather. This all means that Metal Gear Solid 3 is actually an elaborate time machine ensuring that Naked Snake can never truly die. You know, Kojima, most developers are satisfied with just making a game. It seems these special not being killed privileges extend to other legendary characters from the Metal Gear timeline too, including Ocelot. <laughs> All right, fine. Oh, where am I? You're inside the Animus. Which is... It's a projector that renders genetic memories in three dimensions. The Animus from Assassin's Creed isn't just a fancy home entertainment setup. It's also a device that allows its user to render genetic memories in three dimensions to learn things such as valuable information about the Assassin Order, the location of pieces of First Civilization technology, or how much Edward Kenway enjoyed petting dogs. It was a lot, by the way. Is someone writing this down? If you ever fall completely out of sync, the Animus will restore you to your last synchronized position. As the Animus simulation is supposed to be an exact recreation of the life of the person whose genetic memories you are currently experiencing, doing things that didn't really happen causes the memory to become unstable and eventually collapse altogether, which is known as desynchronizing. These things that didn't actually happen include sailing off in the wrong direction, accidentally killing George Washington, or yes, dying. So we're not really dying when we crash Leonardo da Vinci's glider, or get mauled by a wild animal, or fall off Notre Dame Cathedral, because none of that actually happened. According to history, we nailed it first time. So thanks, Animus History need never know how bad we are at naval combat. Down the topsail! One more direct hit! While it's never actually explained to you how you keep coming back to life in Sunset Overdrive, I ascribe it to the fact that you're so into pop culture, you're not going to let a little thing like being dead stop you from making a winking reference to something. Because no matter how battered you get in Sunset Overdrive, there's always a pop culture reference waiting around the corner to get you back in the game. Whether you're being lowered back into action like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, arriving in Bill and Ted's phone booth, or popping out of a Terminator time portal, coming back to life in Sunset Overdrive is like coming to after being given CPR at Comic-Con. I guess when you run out of 80s movies to reference, you die for good? Oh wait, Portal? We're doing video games as well? I'm basically immortal. I'm gonna go play in traffic. Frameshift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Elite Dangerous's take on our galaxy is a hazardous place full of pirates, scavengers, and complicated docking procedures. Warning, landing gear not deployed. Death is never more than a few light seconds away, but you can rest easy knowing that you're covered by a comprehensive insurance policy that puts our primitive 21st century ones to shame. Whether you've suffocated to death after running out of fuel in the deepest reaches of space, or had your body completely atomized after picking a fight with the space fuzz, this mysterious insurance company will pluck you from the void and deposit you at the last space station you visited with a brand new ship for a very reasonable excess fee. Think about that next time your insurance company gets shirty about replacing a dropped iPhone. But how does this work? Do they keep your genetic information on file and pop out a clone? And more importantly, how could an insurance company that operates like this ever turn a profit? No one knows, but as my mother always told me, never look a space gift horse in the space mouth. My mother's weird.
Those were the ways video games ensured we stayed technically alive, despite us dying harder than a Kinect joke at the Microsoft Christmas party. Got any other immortality methods we missed? Let us know in the comments, and like and subscribe for more videos like this from outside Xbox. Thanks for watching.